Um, to, to keep on uh, local businesses and to keep on the, this theme that we're, we're talking about now, let's move into the political realm and maybe okay. a little bit of controversy. Um, as you know, um, there's been a little bit of a backlash against the uh, increase in the sales tax to 6.5%. Right. Um, and um, the state is looking at a, a, a ballot initiative put forth by Carla Howell Right. Um, to drive down the sales tax to 3%. Now, um, not to tell you something that you already know um, because you're there, but uh, the estimate is uh, about $2.5 billion. Uh, we know the state already is going to have a structural deficit because of a loss of stimulus and what have you, uh, and revenues being down of about 2 to $2.5 billion. Um, so w with that much on the line, I mean, what are your thoughts about uh, reduction to three. Let's start with that. Right. I'm not quite sure how they came up with this number, quite frankly. I think if they had looked at something on the, um, maybe in the vicinity of 5%, I think the ballot question would probably be approved by the voters. Um, I'll support whatever the voters um, uh, agree to on this particular ballot question. Um, whatever their will is, I will vote to implement that uh, will. However, I will say this. It's been explained to me a couple of different ways, and I think a more concrete example is helpful. If we were to, say, for example, go down to 3%, what we would see is, for example, the entire um, court system, uh, state police, local police, jails, the entire criminal justice system would be eliminated, or could be if you addressed it, if, if you applied it to that area. The entire human service sector could be, could be uh, decimated if you applied it strictly to that area. So of course that would not happen. It would be applied across the board, but it gives people a sense. All the district attorneys, all the courts, all the prisons, all the state police would be laid off. And I think that gives people a, a concrete way to measure um, how drastic this would be in terms of revenue. Yeah, and, and it, it's, it's pretty severe. So let's stay on this for a while because we can have some fun with the politics. Yes. Um, you know, we've had, I think, all three gubernatorial candidates have said that, that they would be opposed to this. Correct. Charlie Baker included, Tim Cahill included. Mm -hmm. um, but both Baker and Cahill have said that they would like to see the sales tax go back to five. Mm -hmm. Um, a treasurer candidate, uh, your colleague uh, Karen Polito, has said that she thinks people should vote for three and it would give her impetus and, and legislators impetus uh, to get to five or right. to raise it back up to five. Right. Multifold question. One is if they do, if the electorate votes to move it to three, will you honor uh, the will of the voters and move to implement uh, three percent? I will. Plain and simple. Plain and I simple. mean, uh, I started off in the legislature actually the first day um, of my tenure there uh, with the question about the marriage um, issue and being on the ballot and uh, not being addressed um, by the legislature uh, regarding the, the, the will of the people in terms of wanting that question put on the ballot. It was a tough, tough question. But I had made a promise to people. I told them that I would support the will of the voters on this. I did. It was the first day. I'll do the same with this, um, but I will, I will ensure that I am in Methuen continually explaining to people the ramifications for our community. Because as you well know, the ramifications for our community will be very, very severe. Yes. In terms of public safety, in terms of the basic services that we supply to people and provide them on a daily basis, there will be, um, there will be uh, some very, very uh, ch uh, severe changes in our community as a result of this, should it go through. Let me, let, let's stay with the sales tax for a while because now we're going to put you a little bit on the hot seat here because uh, independent of the ballot question, you know, there, there's a, uh, a fairly good debate going on in, in, at the governor's level and the debate is uh, Governor Patrick has said that yes, the goal should be to move it back to five. Okay. Uh, Charlie Baker has said it should go back to five immediately, and I think Tim Cahill has said that. Should it go back to five immediately uh, if the ballot question right. fails, or should we um, move it back incrementally or at a better economic time? I think the governor said that the values of the state require it to stay at 6.5, at least in the short term. Mm -hmm. um, the other two, again, move it back to five. Where do you come down on this? Well, that's a very good question, Mayor. 
And I've agreed with, quite frankly, I've agreed with um, a great deal of what Charlie Baker has had to say in this campaign. However, here I think the governor um, might be correct, and I'll tell you the reason why. It goes back to um, what we were talking about raising taxes right now um, in these difficult economic times. If we're going to scale back, um, I think what would make sense is to scale back um, in a more gradual fashion. Yep. However, I do disagree with you in one respect. I think that we need to honor the will of the people and do it right away. In other words, I don't think we should wait, as the governor is saying. I think we should roll it back if, immediately. If you should Not roll the complete it back amount, but we should roll it back immediately. Yeah. And um, because you don't want to put, um, you don't want to create a lot of unemployment at this point in time. I mean, that's certainly not going to uh, help our local businesses. It, it makes no sense from a broad uh, state perspective to have unemployment spike up as a result of this all at once. Sure, sure. Okay, so enough on the sales tax. Let's get off of the sales tax. Um, very quickly, I, I'm, I'm not sure how much time we have left, but let, let's go through a couple of uh, lightning rounds here. Okay. Um, on the uh, ballot question 40B, Yes. Uh, and that is to repeal the 40B law or not repeal it. Right. Your position. I, I, I'm going to vote to repeal it. You're going to vote to repeal it. And I'm going to advocate for people to do so. Absolutely. Okay. We need to do that. We've had an experience here in Methuen when we were on city council. There's no doubt. There's no doubt that we need more affordable housing in the Commonwealth. We need more affordable housing in Methuen. We have to do it. We have to find some way to do it, but the current law as it states um, it really is, in many aspects, a way for a developer to build very, very expensive homes and, and skirt the zoning laws. Sure. And so, as a result, you know, it's, it's obviously not accomplishing what it, it was intended to accomplish when you just look at the results that it's, it has achieved. Well, l let me ask you this, because I know there's some political disagreement on that, and people point to um, a lot of units of housing that might not have come online that we clearly need. But right. Let's talk about some of the things that you were invested in as a city councilor, which is um, the, the financial underpinnings of some of the 40B developments, maybe mm -hmm. not all of them, right. but I think it's quite clear from some of the Boston uh, reporting that's been done that not all the 40B developers have followed the financial rules right. that are set up to manage 40B so that it's not a, it's, you make a profit, right. but you make a managed profit in return for the right to build where you might not have that opportunity. Um, what are your thoughts on the finances there? Do we need to look at this through the Inspector General's office? Have we done enough in terms of financial audits and do the audit responsibilities currently fall in the right place? Um, that, I think, if we were to do that, I think that it would clearly indicate that this law has, has got to go. And the reason being is, is not only have there been situations where, um, because of lack of oversight, that developers have really made profits above and beyond in later years that, that were not uh, guaranteed to them by law, what has also happened in a large me measure is if a community was really not available, uh, are not aware of the tools available to them, in other words, to make requirements that this be um, affordable for 25, 30, 40 years, which we did in Methuen, which has been very helpful, but many communities have not. So these have been, um, I guess, affordable for uh, a very short period of time, and then they, they quickly flipped over to non-affordable units, especially yep. in the suburbs. And um, as a result, we're struggling to, um, to have affordable housing in the Commonwealth. It's, yeah. it's a really, in many, many ways, it's, it's been a gift to um, developers, and, and that's certainly not, I know what the intenders, that, that was not the intention of, of the law initially, but that's what has resulted. No question about it, and I, I do agree with you, at least on the financial portion, that there have been some noted abuses, and yes. um, the audits really haven't been up to snuff, and we've seen some of that, I believe, in Methuen. But um, enough on 40B. 